afraid of the dark. Hello, dear listeners. Today I am going to tell a story that happened at night on the territory of a psychiatric hospital. How to explain these terrible events, judge for yourself. I wish you a pleasant listening and please subscribe to the channel and write a comment. Thank you. One summer, in the early 90s, I had the opportunity to work in a psychiatric hospital. The position was incredibly responsible. I was the operator of the sewage treatment plant. Since there were only two of us, including me, we had to work on alternate days. The station itself was a dirty yellow, dilapidated, two-story building of circular shape. It was located 50 meters from the half-ruined fence of the hospital on the edge of a sturdy pine forest. In general, there were no living people nearby, and the dead were literally beyond the fence I'm talking about the morgue. During the introductory tour, my future colleague, a small, wiry man with cunning black eyes, eloquently talked about the mysteries of this noble profession and what it takes to excel in it, while explaining the operation and general structure of this magnificent facility. From everything he said to me and from what I saw with my own eyes, I understood the work was not difficult. The main collector of the hospital, where all its sewage waters flowed, was located on the first floor, as well as the pumps that needed to be turned on from time to time. A wooden, two-flight staircase led to the second floor, with very creaky steps, which ended with a door to the staff room, where my colleague and I stayed. I can't say it was very spacious, a desk, a chair, lockers for work clothes and clean clothes, a makeshift heating device, and a bunk bed where my predecessor had recently passed away. My future partner mentioned this in passing, slyly glancing at me and waiting for my reaction, but at that glorious time I considered myself a nihilist and a cynic, so I didn't react at all. And I was wrong. Anyway, the next day I started to fulfill my duties. Honestly, it was boring. I spent half a day in the room, reading a book and sipping tea, remembering to press the button every three hours. Now I laugh at it, they paid a salary for nothing. They could have installed some automation, but no, they kept a special person. Well, whatever. The second half of the day I wandered around the hospital grounds, made a couple of new acquaintances mostly with patients, went to the canteen for dinner, and return to my cell to eat and suffer from boredom again. Somewhere after 10 in the evening, all movement on the territory quieted down. Around midnight, a lantern lit up at the fence, illuminating the path to my station, and I decided it was time to sleep. After making the bunk with home linen and smoking a cigarette for the night, I turned off the lamp. For a while, I couldn't fall asleep, tossing and turning. Some silly thoughts came to my mind, but eventually I drifted off. The awakening was swift. No, very swift. I woke up instantly. In the pre-dawn twilight of the white night, the outlines of objects in the room were blurred, but I clearly saw a black figure of a man in a cloak or cape with a hood at my feet. Why I assumed it was a man. Don't ask me, I don't know. I saw it for a brief moment, so I didn't even have time to be scared. The fear came later. I quickly turned to the lamp and turned on the light. I turned my head, but it wasn't there. That's when fear hit me. In general, the lamp was never turned off afterwards, by the way. As I later found out, my replacement did the same. My uncle came at nine in the morning, but I didn't complain to him, although he tried to find out from me how the night went, if there were any incidents, and so on. Now I think he knew about the local infernal inhabitant, 
but back then I couldn't even think of talking about such things considered it nonsense and persuaded myself you imagined it, imagined it, but deep down I was a hundred percent sure it wasn't imagined. Several days passed calmly. I brought my guitar to work. Fortunately the place was remote and no one could hear my singing. I sat with a book until night, got to know people, entertained myself as best I could. During one of these ordinary duties I stayed up late with a book. And then at three in the morning I heard footsteps, yes, on that same creaky staircase by the way. There was no lock on the front door. We locked ourselves from the inside with a piece of iron pipe. Tightly there were no other options to enter. When the lower steps creaked, a bell rang in my head, but absorbed in reading. I didn't pay attention to it, but when it reached the landing between the flights I got scared. I vividly remembered locking the door to the street, turning off the lights downstairs and on the stairs, and now something was rising from this darkness towards me, something I couldn't even imagine. It continued to ascend heavily, as if it was a very heavy person with a significant shortness of breath, the steps under its feet almost crackling. I froze, in complete stupor staring at the flimsy latch, clearly understanding that it wouldn't save me, but I couldn't act. I looked at this latch and waited for what would happen next. Now this something was at the door, only a thin latch separated us. I, in fact, bid farewell to life, but nothing happened, only a clear presence was felt, and goosebumps ran down my spine. The theatrical pause was brilliantly executed. I almost wet myself when I heard the light tapping of finger bones on the flimsy door, and then again, electric silence. At that moment when panic and horror were about to overflow, and a wild scream was about to burst free from my throat, it, the creature or whatever it should be called, turned around and began to descend. I physically felt the boards bending under such a weight. Nevertheless, with each creak of the stairs it became easier, as if stones were falling out of a big sack on my back through a gap, making the burden lighter and lighter, and well the last creak came, and everything fell silent. I wanted to cry tears of joy, as if my death sentence had been lifted, but strangely, the fear quickly subsided, and the emotions that had just overwhelmed me receded like the sea at low tide. I briskly jumped off the bunk, opened the door to the stairs, turned on the light there, went downstairs, in the rather dark room, reached the switch, and illuminating it, began to study it in detail. I found nothing. The lock was in place. There was nowhere to hide except maybe in the main collector, but I dismissed that thought and quickly calmed down. I went back upstairs and fell asleep peacefully, although this time the light stayed on everywhere. By morning there was no trace of horror left, apparently my brain had shut down some program to prevent me from going crazy. In general, despite such incidents, I didn't leave my duty, so to speak. The sequel came around July, when the nights became darker, and I acquired a buddy in the hospital boiler room named Billy. I can't say how we became friends, probably because it was terribly boring to sit alone in the room, and the patients, well, they were patients. It was interesting to listen to their delusions for the first five minutes. Billy, despite his youth, had already spent some time in the clink, and his prison stories were endless. There was some bizarre trend back then, about everything prison related. And then one night I was returning from another chat with Billy. It was already dark, passing by the morgue. I heard a knocking sound, my curiosity deserves praise, 
I circled the building and saw how the door of the morgue, with peeling blue paint, was convulsing and the padlock was about to come off. The blows were coming from inside, I witnessed the birth of a dead man. How I ran, quickly, skillfully. How did I close the door? On the fly. No one had time to say a word, including me. Why didn't I run to people? To Billy. Don't even ask, reflex. I sat with the light on until morning realizing that I was more afraid of the dead than of something. You know, when my girlfriend who worked as the chief doctor's secretary told me that the other day a patient fell from a high staircase and died, was placed in the morgue, and then found in the morgue corridor, lying by the door with broken bones, I felt, well, a little uneasy. Then August happened. One memorable night I was playing the guitar I could have held a concert, but I tried to avoid it, feeling that it was too early to shine with my perfection. In the end, the guitar was upset, I put it by the closet and went to sleep. I had a dream he enters my room, calmly says to me, hi, what's going on here? Then he takes the guitar, says it's poorly tuned, tunes it then plays some song and says, well, that's better. He taps me on the shoulder. I, as if I'm not there, I wake up. The guitar is lying on the closet, tuned. I don't ask questions about what it is. I accept it as a fact. The psychiatric hospital attracts all sorts of things. But I must say every time something inexplicable happened in my room, the heating device was working, and it consumes not only electricity but also oxygen. Could the explanation be in that? 